Bruchem Aboyim. Again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. Um, the lecture this week uh, is called Two Necessities for Success. So this week on my thoughts, I would like to propose that what we need to be successful in all areas of our lives, whether it's secular or spiritual, is what I call an IV. Intelligence and vision. We need them both. The animal kingdom is superior to mankind in so many ways. Think of it. Animals are stronger and faster than man. They have keener sight, and their sense of smell is essential for their survival. So what makes us the most powerful force in creation? It's our intellect and vision, both of which are essential for us to not only survive, but to flourish and to dominate our world. You know, many things that we do in life are performed through our physical physicality, through our physical being. However, it is our intellect that allows us to perform them in an orderly and efficient manner. You know, I heard Mike Tyson, a world heavyweight boxing champion, he stated that winning a prize fight is 90% mental. Brains will always overcome brawn. This is the reason why coaches make it a point to watch videotapes. They use their intellect and vision to discover the weaknesses in their competitors' tendencies and game plan. You know, our morning prayers begin with 15 requests. The first of these is a request that God Almighty should grant us intellect. The first of the morning blessing states that blessed are you, Lord our God, who gives the rooster the understanding to distinguish between day and night. So this prayer is an illusion that God Almighty gives the rooster the ability to distinguish between day and night, so too should he give us the intelligence to be able to distinguish between all that is beneficial and or detrimental to our existence. The very next blessing is a request for opening the eyes of the blind, Bokeh Ibrim. Simply understood, it would seem to be a blessing for sight. However, whether a blind person's eyes are open or closed really makes no difference. Either way, they are still unable to see. So this blessing is requesting something much deeper, vision. As Helen Keller stated, worse than being blind is to have no vision. One can possess all the intellect in the world, but without vision, it's useless. You know, it's like holding a weapon isn't good enough. If a person doesn't know where to aim, a weapon will be of little use in protecting himself. In the weekday Amida, the standing prayer that we recite three times daily, other than on Shabbat or the holidays, there are 13 personal requests that we present before God Almighty. The first of these prayers open with the words, that you bestow upon man knowledge. Now, even before we request any blessing from God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, we first and foremost ask Him to bestow upon us knowledge. You know, the Torah in Orachayim writes, Since man's supremacy over animals lies in his capacity for insight and perception, the blessing of Atachone was established as the first of the 13 personal requests in the Amida prayer. Since without insight, there can be no prayer. The Seder Hayom stated that it is critical for one to concentrate on his blessing, on this blessing properly, for it is the primary request that one asks from, from, for his, from his Creator, the ability to know what is good and what is evil. You know, it would seem like that's pretty simple. There's a story told of the uh, Grog, great rabbi, and his illustrious student, Reb Chaim of Elosha, he began the yeshiva movement of students going and studying in a, in a, whole, in a school setting. And Reb Chaim said to the Gra, they were talking that they should start a yeshiva movement, they should train the leaders of the next generation. Well, the Gra looked at him and said, forget it, it's not a good idea. So he let it go. A year later, Reb Chaim was talking to the Gra, and he said, just mentioning, you know, that the yeshiva movement might take care of that problem. The Gra looked at him and smiled and said, it's a great idea, go do it. Well, Reb Chaim was taken back. Uh, excuse me, Reb, but he said that 
A year ago, I told you the same thing. You told me it was a bad idea. Now it's a good idea. What changed? And the girl said to me, you know, when you told me the concept originally, you had such fire that I couldn't distinguish whether it was good or bad. You hate a horror or you hate a toe. So I let it go. But now a year later, you say it, you still have it, and you say it calmly, I see, that it comes from the side of good, and you should go do it. Again, that was the granddaddy of all the yeshiva movement that we have today. And as it states in Mishle, the awe of heaven is the beginning of knowledge. The Talmud and the Tractate in the Dharm states, if one acquires this wisdom, what does he lack? But if he does not acquire this wisdom, huh, then what has he acquired? The Talmud is teaching us that one who has wisdom has everything. The verse in the portion of Kisiso, in the book of Deuteronomy states, since you did not serve the Lord your God, when everything was abundant, you will serve your enemies without anything. Rav Nachman said that without anything means that you will be without wisdom. Abaya also said we have a tradition that there is no truly destitute person except for one who is impoverished of wisdom. The Sefer in the Tznetzer HaChayim relates that Ramosha Kasavar once said to his followers, some people believe that one must turn over worlds, meaning pray with tremendous passion, only when they were reciting the prayer on the Sonic Tokev, which is a special prayer that we offer up to God Almighty on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. However, they fail to realize that they must turn over worlds every day, especially when they recite the blessing of Atta Chonein in the Amida, in the standing prayer. You know, on, one, on another occasion, he expressed this idea a little differently. He said, when one is having difficulty concentrating in the Amida, he should at least, the very least, focus on the blessing of Atachone. Rashi writes a comment in the Talmud and the Tractate of Avodah Zarah, that if one finds that they are forgetting their learning, what they should do is that they should spend extra time on reciting the blessing of Atachone. But Yeshua Karlitz, known as the Chazon Ish, was a prominent rabbi and halachic authority in the 20th century. After his passing, his brother with Mayor Karlitz was asked, what made the Chazon Ish who he was? He responded, it's clear among our family members that he was able to reach the heights that he did because of his particular concentration when he recited the words in the Amida of Chanenu mi itcha, grant us from yourself, found in the prayer of Atachone. So he asked that God's presence should reside within him, and God fulfilled his request. This prayer is unique among all the other 12 requests found in the Amida. The other prayers begin with a request and then end with a praise. This prayer, however, follows the same design that the men of the Great Assembly, the Anshe Knesset Sagdola, instituted for the Amida prayer itself. First praise, then a request, and then gratitude. The prayer begins with a praise of God, Ata Chonen, that you bestowed knowledge on mankind and teach mortals understanding. Next, there's a request, Chonenu Mi Itcha, graciously, Bestow upon us from your wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And then it concludes with words of gratitude. Baruch atah Hashem, blessed are you, Lord. Chone hadas, blessed who, Lord who graciously bestows knowledge. In the prayer we mentioned Chabad, which is an acronym for three things. Chokmah, wisdom. Bina, understanding. And Dat, knowledge. Now Chokmah, wisdom which can be broken up into two words, koach and ma, which is loosely translated as a seminal flash. An idea. Where does an idea come from? It is perceived as a divine inspiration, uh, almost a sort of prophecy. Bina is seen as understanding. Once an idea has entered your mind, you now begin to work on building an understanding of its benefits and usages. The word is derived from the Hebrew word bone, which means to build. Das is translated as knowledge. 
the culmination of information that you have learned from your experiences, what we refer to as first-hand knowledge. There is also knowledge that you have attained from books and or heard from other sources. So the order is first Chochma, then Bina, and then Da. What I find interesting is that the blessing of Chonein Hadas begins with Da, knowledge, rather than Chochma, wisdom. Das knowledge is something that we have supposedly earned through our own efforts. That is in contrast to Chochmah, wisdom which we receive as a gift from a benevolent Father in Heaven. In addition, there are four Hebrew names that are used to refer to man. They are listed in order of prestige. First is Adam, Ish, Gever, and Enosh. The blessing begins with the Hebrew word Ata, you. Now, this is the only one of the 13 requests that begin with the word you, a word that expresses the close relationship that we enjoy with God, our Father in heaven. The prayer continues with, You graciously bestow knowledge on man. Now, the word chonen is derived from the word chinom, which means free, a gift. This is in contrast to something that you have earned. This word seems to contradict, contradict our understanding of the word dat, knowledge. So knowledge is defined as facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through their experience or education. In this prayer, knowledge is connected with the name Adam, the most elevated name of mankind, since it connects to someone who has persevered and has gathered information. But we learn a great lesson from these words. One might erroneously believe that all the knowledge that they have accumulated in their lifetime is only due to their own efforts. But the blessing is telling us just the opposite, that even knowledge that we have acquired as a result of our active participation, that too is a gift from God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. The next phrase in the blessing includes the lowest name of man, Enosh. The verse reads, Umalamed Anosh Bina, and you teach mortals understanding. God Almighty is interested and concerned about all of his children, regardless of their mental aptitude. In fact, the more that we need, the more that God wants to help us. God Almighty becomes the ultimate teacher, especially to those individuals who need it the most. The person who possesses the least amount of intelligence requires a teacher with the greatest amount of patience and intellect. We ask God, our Father in heaven, to bestow upon us from your intellect. One of the traits that a child inherits from a father is their IQ. The Torah tells us that we should go in his ways. Our mission in life, then, is for us to emulate God Almighty, our Father in heaven. We beseech God to bestow upon us not just intellect, but a godly intellect that reflects God and his values. The blessing ends with the words, Blessed are you, Lord, who chonen hadot, who graciously bestows knowledge. We see that the prayer begins and ends with the same words, chonen hadas, bestow upon us knowledge. This repetition teaches us that everything in life, everything begins and ends with intellect. In the prayer that we offer up to God on the holiday of Yom Kippur, we recite, 44 verses. Each of the verses begins with the Hebrew words al chet. These words mean, and for all the sins. While we recite each verse, we beat our chest as a sign of contrition. 44 verses, twice the Hebrew alphabet. Words that express 44 different sins that we may well have transgressed throughout the previous year. What I find interesting is that one of the 44 verses states, and for the sins that I transgress with my Yetzahara, my evil inclination. Hmm. Well, what are the other 43 attributed to? Aren't all sins that we transgress connected in some way or another to our evil inclination? The answer is no. The other 43 sins are connected to our Yetzahara, our good inclination. We did a mitzvah. We did a good deed, but we chose the wrong one to do. This is why we need an IV. We need the intellect and vision to assist us in making the proper choice at the proper time. 
since there are times that what we perceive as a misfit was in reality a sin, a transgression like any other. Another interesting fact is that there are 67 letters in this first blessing. If you add the blessing to the number of letters, then the number is 68. 68 is the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word chayim, life. The only way for a person to live a life that has purpose and meaning is by first utilizing their intellect and vision to connect to God Almighty. If you add the numbers 6 and 7 together, well, they equal 13. The 13th, the last of the personal blessings in the Amida, is Shema Koleinu, hear our voice. We can be certain that if we use our intellect and vision properly, that we will be able to turn to God our Father in Heaven, and He will hear our voice and answer our prayers in the affirmative. However, if we misuse our intellect and vision, if we don't find a way to connect them to our Father in Heaven, the end result may well be that our intellect will lead us down a road of godliness and destruction, as we witness in our world today. As we have become less religious, the world has become a more and more dangerous place to live. Think of it as nuclear power. If we use it properly, it is a benefit to the world. However, if we use it improperly, it can be used to destroy us. In the last paragraph of the Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, it states that you should not go after your heart or your eyes, after which you go astray. Rashi in the portion of Shalach, commenting on these words, states that the heart and the eyes are the spies of the body, that they are the agents for its sin. The eye sees and the heart desires then the body, the person, commits the sin, based on a tantruma. The Tolos of Ephraim said that tantruma should have stated that, that the heart desires and then the eye sees, like it is stated in the Torah. Why did he change the order? He said that somehow if the heart doesn't desire, then the eye just doesn't see. However, if we use both our intellect and our vision properly, then together they have the ability to overcome our evil desires and our self-centered emotions. So let us pray to God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, that He should bless us, that we should be able to utilize the gift of our intellect and vision properly. May He open our minds and our eyes so that we can identify and gain a true understanding of the wisdom and the deep love and affection that God extends to each one of us in the hope that we can learn to emulate all of His positive traits of love and kindness, so that we can become, once again, more godly. Let us pray that God brings a swift end to the war in Gaza with a victory over Hamas and all the evil in the world. May he return home all the hostages safely, cure the sick and injured, comfort the mourners, and return home all of our brave IDF soldiers safely, with Mashiach Tsukeno leading the way, quickly and in our time. Let it happen now. Again, let me thank you for attending. Again, God should bless you and yours with all that's good. You should be healthy, you should be safe, and you should be, I, to this week, dry. God should bless you with all that's good. Uh, again, let me please say to you that if you haven't, please subscribe, push the like button, and please share with your friends. Uh, there will be a musical rendition after this uh, um, class is over. Um, hope you enjoy it. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom.